Well, Theo, mate, thank you uh, for joining us today. Theo uh, Angelopoulos, mortgage broker to the stars, mate. Keen to, to get your take uh, on what's going on in the market. Clearly, we're seeing a, a bunch of activity. Um, so I've got, a f- I've got a few questions around what you're seeing and some of the, <clears throat> the tips and hacks for people. But um, a good place to, I, I, uh, to start, I think, is uh, what's the, what do you see as the biggest mistake that people are making um, with when it comes to buying property in the current environment? Yeah, I, the biggest one I see is that people are looking for a bargain. There's just no bargains out there and they're going way too low on a property that they're, they're keen on. They lose the yeah. agent straight away and that's it. The, the deal's done. That's the biggest yeah. one that I, I tend to, to find straight away. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Like, because I think that you, it's, I, I don't know if it's like a media hype thing or, um, or it's like the water cooler or the virtual water cooler these days yeah. conversation thing. But you see, you know, when people start getting into the market that uh, they feel immediately that they're, they're experts and it's like, oh, people are just like, oh, just, you know, pick this, uh, just find that hotspot and then you'll find this awesome deal. But yeah. I think it is really easy to get caught up in, in that and, um, one, blow up opportunities for properties, as you say, but two, you're missing that sort of long-term um, view. And I think that, you know, time is one of these things that de-risks all risk. And for uh, it's easy, while it is easy to get caught in that short-term mentality, ultimately your property is a, is a 10, 20 uh, or more year decision that yeah. it's, you know, missing, missing out on that, that extra, like the $5,000, you're not even going to notice it. Uh, yeah. over time so um, we, look we were just ha- just having a bit of a chat uh, before kicking off but what are you seeing in the market out there at the moment yeah look it's it's flooded there's a definitely a lot of uh, demand out there to buy property um, pre-approvals at an all-time high is what I'm hearing from the bank so there's a lot of people cashed up looking to buy mm. um, but yeah look I think right now you need to be firm with your offers. So if you're going into a property and you're keen on it, you've got to let the agent know that you're keen. Don't bullshit them. Don't go too low because they're not, you're going to lose them straight away. End of the day, they've got a job to do. They're trying to sell the property, get the best price for, for obviously the seller. And you've got to try to negotiate with them. That's what, if you want to get into the market, that's my number one tip. Yeah. And what do you, how do you find that balance? Because obviously, you know, people, people, you, you want to, you want to secure a property. You want to get yep. a place that you want, but you don't want to pay more than you need to as well. And I think yeah. one one thing that I've seen where uh, a, a mistake that people make is sometimes that they, they'll they get pre-approved to a level and then they've immediately, they've anchored their price point to that level where it might yeah. not actually, they might have started it at a, at a lower point, but because they can get pre-approved, then immediately that's their price point and um, yeah. can go to that. But how, how, how do you suggest finding that good balance between getting a, getting a, their deal, not paying more than you need to, but ultimately, um, yeah, securing the property that you want. Yeah, look, I think it comes down to cash flow number one and what you're prepared to pay for the property. Just because the banks are prepared to offer you $2 million, people's borrowing capacities these days are at an all-time high. You've got to remember that. And just because one bank says you can go up to $2 mil doesn't necessarily mean you should be spending $2 mil. All of that, it's what you're comfortable with spending. And then from there, it, it comes down to the area that you're looking at and the lifestyle that you're trying to secure. And then just having a look around at those pockets. Um, look, I always tell my clients, you know, if, you, if your price point is 2 mil and you're able to borrow potentially up to 2.2, have that as a buffer. So borrow a little bit more than you want, just in case, because with the pre-approval, it's easy to come down in, in the amount that you've been approved for than it is to increase. So you'd be surprised yes. how many times in the past when, had clients, you know, give me a call a few days before auction. So, yeah, I know I'm, I'm pre-approved for up to two mil. There is a chance it's going to go for 2.1. What what can we do? And I'm just like, geez, <laughs> I've, got, I've got 24 hours potentially to, to increase your, your limit. So, yeah, always have a little bit of a buffer there. Um, don't tell the agent what your maximum limit is. Uh, do your research. So, I'll give my clients property reports through RP data. They're fairly accurate in times, um, but I use that report more for comparable sales. So if you're buying in a certain postcode, it's got a list of properties that have recently sold there and you have a look at the land size, you have a look at the number of bedrooms, you have a look at the quality and you come, you can make a decision at the end of the day. Um, a lot of people, I'm, I'm also helping uh, engaging buyers agents, um, which is also helping speed up the process to find a property. Um, yeah, it just takes the guesswork out. It, just, it depends also how much you want to put into it. 
You know, some people have got plenty of time to spend on the weekend and have a look through three, four properties and, and there's other people that are just so time poor and that, that could be because they've got families, too busy at work, mm. um, just couldn't be, you know, couldn't be stuff going around. Um, so, yeah, it really depends on your lifestyle as well. Yeah, I was uh, I was chatting to a buyer's agent the other day and he, he, I was saying, what are, you, what are your tips for making sure you get a good deal? And he said, go and go and do it, go and um, do 100 open homes. And I was like, holy shit. I was like, I couldn't think of anything worse than yeah. going to 100 open homes, uh, which is, I suppose, why those buyer's agents uh, exist because they're, they're in there day in and day out. And for a lot of yeah. people that don't have, have the bandwidth to do that, that yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. After, I'll tell you what, after 100 properties, you become a valuer. You know exactly what the property's <laughs> worth before you step into that. And that's what you need to do. Like literally, like you need to get to at least 20 or 30 minimum before you start making offers on property. Yeah. And if you, so just to follow on though, from what you're saying around the, the, the price points and stuff, what advice would you give to someone that is that they're, um, they they know that their price point is say a million bucks. You've yep. got an, you've got an agent that advertises at a, at say, you know, offers above 900. Yeah. If they think that a million is a fair price and that they're comfortable with that as a number, how do you think is it is you get the right um, sort of play to negotiate with the with the real estate agent and um, okay let's let, touch on the first one yeah buyer's guide you've got to remember that that's a rough indication of what the property is going to go for so technically speaking from from what I've heard it's about ten percent within the reserve so if you're looking at buyer's guide from nine hundred my gut feeling is it's going to be worth more than a mil, okay? So what the agent's trying to do is they're trying to bring everybody in around the 900 mark and they're trying to get all these bodies come through, get emotionally attached to the property. All of a sudden, yes. that 900 gets to 950, but they're not in the ball game. So you've got to yeah. remember that. 10% above that gives you a rough indication of where it's going to get sold. So if, it's, if someone says to me 900, it's about a mil. If a mil is your absolute max, and if you want to try to secure it before it goes to auction, and a lot of properties are going to auction, I, I think auction's probably the fairest way... If you're selling a property in this market and all agents are doing it, they're taking it to auction because it's going to sell itself. But if you want to try to secure it before, you've got to go close to offering your highest offer. That's the only okay. way it's going to come off the market because auction campaigns normally last for about four weeks. And within that four-week period, it needs to either build up the demand to take it to auction or have a really good offer that the vendors are prepared to accept and they're going to take it off a week before. That generally won't linger until the last week. So make a firm offer, and if your budget is a mil, you know, I, I wouldn't negotiate from 900 if that's the, the buyer's guide. If you, based on your research, you think it's close to a mil, maybe start off at 980 and then start working up. But you've got to ask the agent, am I, in, am I in the ballpark with 980 offer? And they'll let you know straight away. They'll say, look, they want a mil, or they want has to be a million and something in front of it. And that's when you start negotiating at the end of the day. Yeah, and I think that uh, that's that sometimes it's easy to forget that that's the, you know, the agent's ultimately there to do a job, which is to get the property sold uh, yeah. as well. So they're, they're good people to be asking for this feedback. Yeah. Also, just understanding for whether whether the, the sellers will sell um, yeah. prior to auction and that you can, you know, ne negotiate with them because I think, some people like to say that they just want to see what the market uh, says and they've just got no intention of, of selling a property before uh, before it goes to auction. Yeah, and you, and you get that. You get people that are testing the market. So, you know, agents probably around the area, they say, Look, if we get you two mil for your property, will you sell? But you know that's not realistic. And they're like, you know what, no worries, I'll test the market. We'll go there and all of a sudden they go through opens and it's on the market and they're getting close. But they're not going to sell for less than two mil, but they've been advertising it at one point six or whatever it might be, just to, to have a look through. But people are testing the market; they are testing it. They're trying to get as much as they can out of it. Yeah, and I think that they're in some cases they're getting it. I, I know that anecdotally for for people that we've been talking to, that especially in that house, um, the house, the home market around yeah. Sydney, that that we've seen a massive influx of demand. I think partly because. Uh, everyone's working from home now or working from home much more than what they have been in the past. So people want that extra bedroom or yeah. the space to, uh, you know, have a home gym or, you yeah. know, whatever those those things are. But it's meaning that that coupled with interest rates with a two in front of them, uh, um, it's just like debt-fueled uh, surge in, in home prices.